Hello guys, happy Thursday of December. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Paige. Welcome if you are new here. I am in a fantastic mood today. I'm just excited. I am so, so excited that it is now December. We can get onto my December TBR and all of the cozy reads that I am so, so excited about. But today, it is time to reflect on the reading that I did in November and the month that we have just had. It was a slightly slower reading month for me in terms of the amount that I read. I feel like I normally end up reading around about 10 books a month and I've only read five at present count. However, it is still the last day of November and I'm hoping to get a book finished today. So I'm thinking it'll be about six books for the month, which is honestly pretty good. There was a very good period of time where I just wasn't reading. I was so tired and like still adjusting to my new job that I just wasn't reading. And I feel like I'm slowly starting to introduce reading back into my schedule and find little places in my day where I can read. So that's really like hopeful and good going forward. And six books is like a pretty good amount to be honest. So I'm very happy with myself. If you guys like TBRs and wrap ups and you wanna stick around and see more, why not hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday so there is no shortage of bookish content here for you to enjoy and it's the festive season and it might be a nice thing to do and there's fun festive content coming your way and I'm just I'm excited about it okay it's just it's a good time and also feel free to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at page and chapter where you can get more behind the scenes slash up to date information about what I'm reading and how I am rating it so you don't have to wait a whole month if you're particularly curious, not that I think you would be. And now let's get into the books that I read in November. So if you guys saw some of my vlogs, you will know that I kicked November off with a major romance mood. I am quite the mood reader. And whilst I normally get into a fantasy vibe in the winter, my brain apparently just short circuited. I don't know if it was the whole job thing and the tired thing or the anxiety thing, but I just wanted to read some really fun, lighthearted romances. So I did. So the first series that I immediately went to was the To All The Boys I've Loved Before series and I read all three and these obviously make up like half of my wrap up because I read all three. So I loved To All The Boys I've Loved Before. I gave this a four stars. I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very very fun, quirky, unique YA romance that really had a lot to it. It's probably not particularly quirky and unique like nowadays but for the time it was written in I really really enjoyed it. And I really, really enjoyed seeing a fake dating trope done so well and in such a non that toxic way. Like I felt like the whole fake dating was just handled really well. I love the inclusion of like the notes and just Lara Jean's whole like premise and concept. I felt like this book really had it all. I think it handled everything really well and it was exactly what I was looking for. Was it absolutely groundbreaking stuff? No. Was it like the best book I've ever read in the entire world? No, of course not. But did it fit the vibe that I was looking for very, very perfectly? Yes, it did. I miss YA romances like this. Like, why can't we go back around to like 2012, 2014 YA romance vibes? And I know that we've made so much positive progress from then, but sometimes I just, I miss gems like this. And so then naturally I moved on to P.S. I Still Love You and I liked this one a little bit less. Um, the reason that I disliked this one so much was that like Peter, like w why was he acting like that? And it was just really difficult to read a whole book about such a toxic relationship when that toxicity was never really addressed. Like, I'm sorry, I don't think Lara Jean was being particularly out of order by being uncomfortable with Peter's relationship with Jen. 
that he's like still continuing to perpetuate. It was just very, very toxic. However, I did quite like how realistic Lara Jean was as a character. Like as she was coming into this relationship, having no previous relationship experience, I can see how all of Peter's experience was quite intimidating to her and did make her feel a bit inferior. And like maybe she wouldn't be special because she like doesn't have any of his firsts. I get where she's coming from with that. I do think that's realistic. I just don't think that Peter constantly wanting to hang out with Jen and put Jen first and then Lara Jean kind of being like forced to accept that was an acceptable turn of events for them. And I also felt like this book was a little slow going. The first book had such a good structure with all of the fake dating. And this one was lacking that a little bit. And then we move on to Always and Forever, Lara Jean, which I hated. This was by far the worst book in the entire in the series and the worst book that I read this entire month. I really really did not enjoy this book. The first like honestly 200 pages I would say are just about Lara Jean's dad and his pursuit for romance and there's not really any kind of relationship dynamics going on between Peter and Lara Jean. This book is also too fast-paced. You cover Lara Jean's entire senior year in this one 300 page book. That's too much, like it just felt so surface level. It, none of it was like really in depth or anything like that. I also found the whole twist of like Lara Jean and the university plotline like really predictable, kind of saw where it was coming from the get go. Didn't even really love the resolution to that or Peter and Lara Jean's ending. This book just really, really perpetuated and romanticized a very toxic relationship. Peter would constantly be throwing fits or getting mad at Lara Jean about like where she wanted to go to uni or like what she wanted from her life. Peter would get really really angry at her about and then Lara Jean would like actually be the one apologizing and trying to make it right. At times she would even know that Peter was in the wrong and she would still be the one, the only one, trying to fix the relationship. I couldn't get behind it. I feel like Jenny Han just destroyed Peter's character throughout the books and there was not really any redemption for them. And I really don't like when there's like a big conflict and then they sort it out and then the book just ends there. I need some kind of proof. The stuff they work through throughout the book has actually caused some kind of learning or redemption that makes me believe these characters are going to stay together. I don't believe that these two characters would stay together beyond the book. I don't feel like either of them learn anything. I don't think that it was a very healthy relationship at all. There wasn't really anything redeeming about this book. I then moved on to the Falling in Love montage by Kira Smith which the lovely Rachel sent to me and I was very excited to get to this. I was still very much in my romance mood. This is a YA sapphic romance set in Ireland. It, it's a very um, main character who's very pessimistic and grumpy and has a lot going on meets bright sunshine character who is the picture of optimism and loves romantic comedies. That's the dynamic between the two. Play. I really enjoyed seeing it play out. I did vlog my experience of reading this. I managed to actually read it in one vlog. I was very very excited about that. It was like the first time this month that it hadn't taken me multiple weeks to read a book. I found the writing style of this a little difficult to get into at the beginning. It's written from our main character's perspective obviously and she has a very kind of teenage girl writing in her diary kind of tone and she'll like speak directly to the reader in a very like stereotypical kind of comical is this what you really think teenagers talk like kind of way and that was a bit off-putting at first however I kind of just got into it and moved past it and didn't really notice it again after the first few chapters so not that big of a deal not that bad. The main thing that I loved about this book even though the characters did really annoy me at times the massive redeeming part of this book was how unique the ending was and how perfectly the ending fit for the theming of this book. And I just, I don't want to say too much more because I really don't want to spoil anything, but I just really loved the way that it was done and how like 
the integrity of the overarching plot and like the inspiration for the plot was kept. This book is also massive on family elements which is something I love to see in YA and is a reason that Morgan Matson is my favourite YA author I would say. Definitely like YA contemporary slash romance author and it's because she really really focuses on family dynamics and elements in her teenage characters lives because as a teenager your family is such a massive part of your life either in a good or a bad way and I felt like those dynamics were really explored in this book. It really did remind me of the type of dynamics Morgan Matson writes and if you really enjoyed Second Chance Summer particularly by Morgan Matson, then I think you would really enjoy this because it is a very second chance relationship with family type of plotline and yeah I just I really really enjoyed this book and a thank you to Rachel for sending it to me because it was just so fun. I can see why you recommended this now. I then picked up a book that was originally on my October Magical Hopathon TBR that I still had not got to, but to be honest I'm kind of glad that I waited because I read it at a time when I knew I would enjoy it, and that is A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. This is kind of like a Great Gatsby retelling except it's set in 1920s Cornwall. It is about our main character Louise or Lou as she likes to be called. She doesn't want to get married, she doesn't want to follow the mould that her older sister has set. She's not sure what she wants to do but she knows that the idea of like getting married and just settling down in this small town in Cornwall doesn't feel right to her. And when the very rich, famous and illustrious Kaju family arrive back into town and start throwing these massive parties that they are famous for in London. Lou finds herself kind of sucked into these parties and sucked into this world and realising that A it's not as glamorous and adventurous as she once believed it to be, B it just proves to her even more that she doesn't want the life that her sister wants and it is very much about Lou kind of coming to terms with what she wants out of life, how that fits in to her family relationships and what that means for her and her family and it just tells the tale of this magical summer. The book gave me very like wintry vibes and so I was like oh I'll read this in winter. I honestly think that despite the vibes of the cover you should probably read this in the summer. It's just a book about this one like life changing perspective changing summer and I think it would like go really nicely on like one of those like slightly colder summer days. It's a very specific recommendation but I gave this book four and a half stars. I thought it was so heartwarming and cute and just, just, it was just good vibes. Like there's nothing more that I can say. This book was very much like character driven rather than plot driven, but it just, it worked. Like everything about this book just worked. And then we are on to the final book, which is the book that I am currently reading. And that is A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Buckman. I'm very much hoping to get this finished today. I do have work later so I might have to finish it tomorrow but still count it towards November. I am 180 pages of the way through and this is a 289 page book. I did accidentally just to spoil something for myself by looking that up. That is annoying but I'm really really enjoying this book so far. It is so freaking heartwarming. It's very much a kind of up tale but less Disneyfied. So honestly I think it's kind of better to go into this book not knowing anything. I can see why the blurb doesn't give anything away. I'm not going to give too much away but it is about this very very cantankerous grumpy old man and him realising that the information that he has and his own fashion beliefs and stuff is needed in the world and there is a place for it in the world and that people actually like want him around and need his help with things and it's about like kind of a like a journey of self-discovery through people constantly asking him for help <laughs> and whilst this annoys him to no end that people are constantly asking him for help it's a kind of a love-hate relationship kind of thing very much like in Up and it's just it's so freaking heartwarming you get flashbacks to Uwe's life as a young adult as well as his current everyday life as well. I feel like I'm not leaning towards the five stars with it yet. I don't know if the last little bit is really gonna push me to give it the five stars but I think it's gotta be like a four star read 
four and a half stars, maybe. I will definitely be reading more of Frederick Buckman's work. I just, it's so unlike anything else that I've read. And Uwe is such a on the surface of it horrible character. And I honestly thought that I didn't really like this book too much when I started reading it. Cause I just like, I just didn't really care. Like I didn't care about him. This is a grumpy old man getting annoyed at people doing things. Like why do I care? You know, I have very little time to read nowadays. Why am I reading this? But I stuck with it and you just learn more and more about him and you just see him in these situations and it's just impossible to not love him and I think that's the whole point. It's just, it's done so well. I really, really recommend this. I will keep you updated over on my social media about how I end up rating this. Hopefully I can get it finished today. If not, I can definitely get it finished tomorrow. But it would just be so satisfying to finish a book on the last day of the month. So hopefully that happens. And so there we have it. There is the five finished books that I read in November and the one that I'm half finished with. All in all, it was a pretty good month. It is not my favourite selection of books that I've read. I don't actually think any of these were really on my TBR. I'll have to go back and look at my TBR. But I don't think I stuck to it at all, which is completely okay. But I am incredibly excited to get into my December TBR. I've just, I've been looking forward to it for so long and I think I've got the vibes absolutely perfect and I can just picture myself reading them and I think they're all gonna be like five star reads and I'm just, I'm so excited. I can't even tell you how excited I am and I get to start tomorrow hopefully. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, do feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. As I said, I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday and there is a lot to look forward to with Christmas coming up. I'm just, I'm so excited about it. As you may be able to tell, let me know down in the comment section if you have read any of these books, what you think of them, whether you like them, don't like them, etc, etc. You get the point that I'm trying to make. Let's just chat about books. Kind of the whole reason that I am here. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you are having a fantastic week. You are enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future. And I will see you for my next video. Bye guys.